The view control bar is one of the features used to control the way items are viewed in a Revit model. Each of these settings control just the way items are displayed in a specific view, while other views can be set up to display the same objects differently using their own view control settings. Those view control settings you can find down here on this bar going across the bottom. Now the first setting that we have here is the scale. In order to best illustrate how the scale works, let's go ahead and go into a first floor plan view. So underneath the project browser on the left hand side, double click on one dash first floor. Now zoom in by just using the mouse wheel on the left hand side here of your view. Here we can see different text and we can see how big this text is in comparison to these lines right here. Well, if we change the scale to be something different from one quarter of an inch equals a foot, oh, let's change this to be uh, something, uh, we'll go much, much bigger to this one and a half inch equals a foot. You notice how much smaller this text is than what it was before? Now, the reason is, is that it didn't actually change the size of the text. An eighth inch piece of text is always an eighth inch piece of text. But whenever you adjust the scale, it's the scale of everything else that adjusts. So the plot size always stays the appropriate scale while everything else adjusts the match to the appropriate size of the plot on your sheet of paper. I'll go ahead and change this back to be a eighth inch equals a foot or a quarter inch equals a foot. I'll change it to a quarter inch equals a foot here so it looks the way that it did. Next, I'm going to move over to the detail level, which is right here. If we select on detail level and change this to be a coarse level of detail, let's zoom in a little bit. We can see the level of detail that's currently showing up here for our beams and our columns. If we change that detail level to be fine, you notice how you have a greater level of detail there at our columns? That's what its purpose is. This is whether or not you want to be able to see it with just single line work or lots of line work with the appropriate material designation shown on the inside of it. The next area is going to be the visual styles. And to see this, we're probably best served to zoom out just a little bit. And if we click on the visual styles button, there's some options here for whether it's wireframe mode, whether or not it's shaded, which you can see starts to add color to it, whether or not we want to add realistic looking colors, which will start to add actual materials to here. Now, it's difficult to see what happened here with these materials because in plan view, it tends to shut off a lot of those material properties so that we can't see the materials nearly as well. But if we look at this in a 3D view, and we can do that by clicking on the little 3D house up here at the top of our screen, and then adjust those settings to perhaps realistic, you can start to see those material properties, in this case for the concrete topping we have on each floor, if we turn this to be shaded or to wireframe, we can really see what's going on and the level of detail that it places in those views. Now, let's go ahead and change this back to hidden line so we have a couple of other options available to us. The next two commands we'd like to do or talk about are going to be shadows off and then the sun path. Shadows off, if you click on that button, it'll then turn the shadows on so you'll then suddenly have a shadow available to you. I do recommend usually leaving your shadows off. And I'll go ahead and click on this little button again in order to turn the shadows off. Uh, the reasoning behind that is, is that turning shadows on really slows your computer down. So you want to keep the shadows off as much as possible just for performance reasons. The little sun settings option here, which is called sun path. If you click on that and go to sun settings, from here, particularly if you click on still or single or multi-day, will allow you to change such things as the location of where this building is on Earth, as well as the date, as well as the time of year. What this is going to allow you to do is that when you turn on your shades and shadows, it'll display your shades and shadows appropriately for that location on Earth at the appropriate time of year. And the last thing mentioned about this dialog box, if you click on little dots right here, you can either type in the location where this building is located at, or instead of using an internet mapping service, like in this case, Google Maps, you can choose default city and pick off of a list whatever the closest city is to the building that you've placed and drawn. I'll go ahead and hit cancel to this to just get out of our menus. This is a rendering button. It says show render dialog box. It looks like a little teapot. And if you select on it, it'll bring up the render dialog. We won't get too much into its properties right now, but that's what it does. 
Also going across the screen, we have Unlocked 3D View. If you click on that button, it'll allow you to lock your 3D view. So all you could do is zoom in and zoom out. It wouldn't allow you to see it from different angles. This button right here is the Temporary Hide Isolate button. It's one of the most used tools you'll probably come across down here at the bottom. And what Temporary Hide Isolate allows you to do, is select on an object, click on the little eyeglasses, and then hide the element. And if you hide the element, you'll no longer be able to see it in the view. If you want to be able to bring it back, you can always click back on it again and say Reset Temporary Hide Isolate to bring it back. Also, if you select on an object and then click on the little eyeglasses down here below, you also have the option to either isolate the object, which will only show that thing on the screen. You could hide the category, which will hide all the objects like it on the screen. Or you can isolate the category, which will only show those objects that are like the thing that you have selected on the screen. For instance, if I wanted to isolate this category of objects, you can see the only things that fall into this category of object are now showing up on the screen. In this case, it's a bunch of different objects that have concrete and structural properties associated with them. And if I select back on the eyeglasses again, we can always reset the temporary height isolate in order to be able to bring that back. Final thing I really wanted to point out down here on the ribbon is going to be this little light bulb looking tool down here. It's called Reveal Hidden Elements. And how it works is if you select on one of these objects and you've hidden it, but instead of resetting the temporary hide isolate by clicking on the little eyeglasses, you clicked on apply hide isolate. What the apply hide isolate did is that it made it so that you could no longer see that object in the view. And you can't see it at all. And if you print it, it just wouldn't show up. And by hitting reset temporary hide isolate, it just won't show up at all. So to get it back, you have to click on the little light bulb tool down here at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the little purple lines indicating the object that you'd hidden. If you select on that object and unhide the element and then click on the big X, that object will then get brought back. One other thing that I need to cover on this bar is going to be this option right here, which is Show Crop Region. The Show Crop Region, what it allows you to do is actually see the reason why this displays the way that it does on the sheet. What I mean by that is if you click on Show Crop Region, I can click there, I can zoom out, and we can see this box that shows up around our view. If I click on that box and then click on the little dot that shows up here at the bottom of the box, I can then hold my mouse button down and drag this up and then cut the building off right there where the crop is at. I can also drag this back down again and now we can see everything that's uh, inside of the box. So if I did this from the top, I could crop off the top of the building. If I wanted to be able to see the top of the building, I could just click on the little circle here, pull it up, and now we'd be able to see it again. The button next to it, which is Do Not Crop View, what it allows you to do is if the building is cropped like that, you decide, I don't want to crop the view. So do not crop view. It'll go ahead and bring your building back up. And if you don't want to see that box anymore, that's really the purpose of the hide crop region button is that you can click on that and you'll no longer see that box going around the outside. The use of these tools allows for the most basic manipulation of the way items can be displayed within an individual view in Revit structure.